Curses in video games vary wildly in their severity. Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse? Pretty terrifying. The Curse of Monkey Island? Actually not so bad. The problem is, when you come across some cursed sword or other video game weapon, how are you supposed to know whether said curse is going to be an unpleasant but manageable condition, like bad breath, or whether your face is going to fall off like you drank from the wrong grail in Indiana Jones 3? Well, we at Outside Xbox are here to help with this handy cut out and keep guide to the seven cursed weapons that absolutely were not worth the bother. Enjoy and beware spoilers for the following games. If there's anything you need, just let me their tears shine the ebony to a sharpest gleam. In this life, and also in Skyrim, there are only three unbendable rules for getting by. One, stay hydrated. Two, save often. Three, don't do what the whispering voice in your basement tells you to do. Few hear my whispers anymore. If only the Jarl of Whiterun had done a better job of imparting this simple wisdom to his infant son, we might never have encountered the sinister Ebony Blade. He won't say a word to me, but I don't know how I upset him. If you could speak to him, draw out the truth, I would be immensely grateful. In your new role as unqualified child counsellor, you discover young Nelkir has been eavesdropping on a spooky voice behind a door in the basement. At the door in the basement, I hear her talking to me. I thought I was caught, but she started telling me even more secrets. This is the point in the horror movie where a smart person leaves the house, burns down the house, and starts a new life in a new house that has no basement. But you didn't get to be the dragonborn by being smart, so down you go to have a chat with the basement voice. At last. I've been waiting for someone more fit to carry out my will. Wouldn't you know it, that voice is that of Mafala, the Daedric Prince of Secrets and apparently really messed up swords. I am Mafala, the Lady of Whisper. Because following her instructions gets you the fabled Ebony Blade, a weapon so cursed so indestructible, so unutterably malevolent that it had to be kept, quote, hidden dark and deep within Dragon's Reach, which is to say, on a table in the cellar. At least put it in a box or something. Excellent work. Now, I trust you're sharp enough to see that the sword doesn't match the description of the ebony blade you may know. It has languished too long outside the winds of alliance and betrayal. To return to its past glory, it must first drink the blood of deceit. What Mafala is trying to say is that this fast, two-handed katana-like sword recharges your health by sucking the life out of your opponents and can only be upgraded to its full life-stealing potential by you using it to kill your nearest and dearest. Seek out those closest to you. The final pluck of their misguided heartstrings will accompany my blade in the song of your grandeur. Yes, thank you, Mafala. Yikes. For every trusting ally you betray and murder, you grow the wicked power of the Ebony Blade and shrink the list of people coming to your next birthday party. Now who is going to bring you presents and share your birthday cake? You can't eat it all by yourself. Or can you? Excellent work, child. By the time you've slayed 10 friendly victims in service of this terrible curse, the Ebony Blade is rocking its most powerful enchantment of 30 points of health absorption per sword strike. At last, 
My blade is returned to its full glory. Now go forth, child. Continue your tiny subversions against the orders of trust and intimacy. On the other hand, your conscience is shredded, you're down ten friends, and it's not like the rest of them will stick around to admire your unbelievably evil new sword. So what's the point? Apart from the one on the end of your unbelievably evil new sword. Secret best Final Fantasy game, Final Fantasy VI, has plenty to recommend it. A sweeping epic narrative, a huge, well-realised world, the ability to suplex a train… <laughs> Go on, tell me your favourite is still Final Fantasy VII. One thing we wouldn't recommend is picking up an item in Final Fantasy VI called the Cursed Shield. It's a piece of armour whose Japanese name directly translates to Bloody Shield, but that you'll come to know as That Bloody Shield. Equipping the Cursed Shield is like activating a secret hard mode. For a start, it reduces your strength, speed, stamina and magic by 7 points, and it offers no boosts to defence, evasion, magic defence or magic evasion which even the lowliest scrub shields in the game manage. What's more, it inflicts a bunch of negative status effects in battle that severely hamper your performance. Carrying the Cursed Shield into battle means that particular character will suffer sap, berserk, silence, confusion and doom. Sounds a lot like the five stages of my last hangover. While using the Cursed Shield at all might seem like the worst idea since the Potty Putter, which encourages you to get a hole in one while doing a number two, there's arguably a good reason to do so. If you can endure and win 256 battles with the shield equipped, the curse will finally be dispelled and it will transform into the Paladin Shield, the most powerful shield in the game. And here's a novel idea, you could just decide that life is too short to make yourself quite that miserable and ignore the dumb cursed shield entirely, playing the game with normal items and probably having a fine old time regardless. Did we mention you can suplex a train? Well you know what, it bears repeating. Transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords eternally retold. Soul Edge, a legendary sword and devourer of souls. Buried in the darkest reaches of history, it was brought back to light in the 16th century. If you're talking about cursed weaponry, it doesn't get more extremely cursed than a sword made of flesh that has a roving eyeball popping out of the blade. That's Soul Edge from the Soul Edge and Soul Calibur series. Apparently, it started life as a regular two-handed sword, but after being bathed in blood and hatred too many times, it developed a demonic soul. Sort of like what happens when you spend a bit too much time on the internet. If you want to see the results of wielding the Soul Edge, you only have to look at series hero Siegfried, who starts off in the original Soul Edge game as a clean-cut Teutonic Knight, hoping to avenge his father's death, but ends the game looking like he's made entirely of pork products. For the rest of the series, Siegfried and his new alter ego Nightmare struggle, fairly unsuccessfully, with the hold the Soul Edge has over them. Multiple other characters become corrupted by its dark influence and the sword itself is considered the main antagonist of the entire franchise, now up to its 13th game. Which is why it's all the more galling to discover that way back in that original game, you could just press the triangle button at a key moment during Siegfried's ending sequence to smash the sword to pieces and save us all a whole heap of trouble. Ha! Right, well, with that ancient evil well and truly vanquished, what's next for you, Siegfried? You've got your whole life ahead of you. I... I don't know what to do. Oh, come on. Take up a hobby? Needlepoint, perhaps? Actually, on second thoughts, maybe stay away from pointy stuff. Gar's coming from Lynchwood to buy it. That idiot's got no idea. 
he never believed the stories about the curse. Boy, oh boy, is he in for a surprise. In classical Freudian psychoanalytic theory, the so-called death drive is the human instinct towards death and self-destruction. And only with this theory can we explain a Vault Hunter's pursuit of the extremely cursed weapon from Borderlands 2 known as the Bane. See, Borderlands 2 will be the first to tell you, or anyone else who will listen, that it has very many guns. One of these very many guns is the Bane, the existence of which we're put onto by its deceased former owner in what we can confidently describe as a bad sign. The Bane. Marcus. This being a game with more guns lying around in it than there are grains of sand on Bondi Beach, a Vault Hunter can only be manifesting their Freudian death drive when they choose to seek out a weapon they are specifically warned is cursed. I knew I hadn't heard the last of that gun. I bought it off a guy a few months ago. Great gun, but it's cursed. Marcus, you had me at great gun. Of course, then the only option is to get on the trail of this mysterious accursed weapon, even if that trail is one of deceased former owners of the Bane and their ominous voice recordings. McNally took the Bane. It worked like a charm against the spider ants, but the curse... <coughs> If you're hearing this, find McNally. He may have left me for dead, but he doesn't deserve what the Bane will do to him. Nobody does. This seems fine. In spite of the ample but vague warnings, the Vault Hunter is drawn inexorably to where the Bane is hidden. At first, the Bane appears to be just a highly effective, powerfully accurate people shooter. But then comes the much publicized curse, and folks, it's bad. <laughs> Not only does the Bane slow your movement to an infuriating, impractical crawl, this cursed gun, which can occur in different variants by the way, also seems to be possessed by a choir of the most ear-splittingly annoying voices you've ever heard. And these voices insist on screaming the news whenever you equip the gun, and then screechily vocalizing all of the gun noises. This makes the Bane more irritating than a new TikTok challenge where you rub your eyes with chili peppers. I'm sorry, nothing is worth this. Sorry. Not open for business yet. It'd be a stretch to describe Devil May Cry 3 as having a profound storyline. After all, the plot appears to be man is attacked by demons while shirtlessly eating pizza. Invitation, huh? Why doesn't my body look like that? I eat so much pizza! The frivolous plot doesn't mean there aren't some entertaining moments though, like when you face off against the bosses Agni and Rudra guarding a door in Mission 5. We must entertain our guest. You're right, we have to be gracious hosts. <laughs> what are you gonna do, kill me with kindness? These bickering brothers are actually a pair of demonic living swords, and while they're initially surprisingly welcoming, it turns out they do take their one job extremely seriously. Our job here is to guard this door. That's right. So we're not going with the killing me with kindness plan then? If you manage to defeat the pair and the headless bodies that wield them, Agni and Rudra will make what is a fairly unconventional request from a defeated boss, for you to take them along with you for the rest of the game, something that Dante agrees to somewhat reluctantly. We could be a great help to you! Okay, but on one condition. What is it? Name it! No, talking. To be fair, they are a relatively handy pair to have along in combat. They can be combined to form a staff, and the elemental powers of fire and wind allow you to dish out extra damage to susceptible enemies. The only problem is, these possessed swords aren't so great at sticking to their promise not to chat. Agni and Rudra shouting ashes to ashes is kind of cute the first time, not so much the hundredth time you pull off the same combo. 
Honestly, it's bad enough that we have to listen to Dante being completely unbearable for the entire game. Well, this is my kind of rain. No wonder this guy looks so funny today. Let me go! Let you go? <laughs> but it would be a waste if you ended up as just a pretty stain. You know what? That's an entirely reasonable response. Death whistles. The hound comes. Don't let the fancy clothes fool you. This is one sick puppy. The darkness duology of games is steeped in lethal power that comes at a dreadful cost, what with being named after the demonic force from which protagonist Jackie Estacado gets his insidious tentacle powers. We've come for the darkness, Jackie. Give it to us! You want it? <laughs> come and get it. When it comes to non-tentically actual weapons, though, there is none more cursed than the ancient and powerful sword carried by the mercenary named Inagami, one of the playable characters in the Darkness 2's co-op campaign called Vendettas. See that sword? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's cursed. It's, it's, it's bearer doomed to wander the earth, devouring the souls of the wicked. This glowing purple blade, known as Kusanagi, might look good mounted on the wall of your gaming den, but be warned, its owner is bound by a truly grim curse. My blade hungers. I must feed it. Or what? Or I perish. It turns out that long ago this blade was used to do a lot of bad guy stuff, and now its owner needs to balance the books by killing a lot of bad guys with it. It was used in the death of a thousand innocent souls. Which is why the bearer of the sword is cursed to redeem the sword by killing a thousand souls of the wicked. Hmm? <laughs> and tonight, the blade will feast. <laughs> and just in case the bearer of the Kusanagi blade was thinking of taking a break from the gruesome slicing and dicing of those wicked souls, the curse comes with an eerie bit of added time pressure. Every day I do not take a wicked soul from this earth. A year of my life is removed. That's right, miss one day of doing murders and you're one year closer to the grave. And if you can't find any more evil folks to skewer with the Kusanagi, you're a goner. There are many wicked souls here. My blade thanks you, as do I. Therefore, for every week-long vacation you take off work, you can scratch seven years off your total life expectancy, which even as a YouTuber trapped in the hamster wheel of content creation, I recognize as a terrible grind. My blade <laughs> is feeding. The Ninja Gaiden series is known for two things. One, featuring cool ninjas, and two, being tougher than a diamond-tipped Jason Statham. Arguably the hardest in the series is the first Xbox installment, 2004's efficiently titled Ninja Gaiden. It's not entirely clear then why you'd want to make this game even more difficult for yourself, particularly when you're facing off against bosses like, for example, the infernal dark samurai Doku. This guy is about 9 feet tall, clad in black on black armour, and has a voice that makes Darth Vader sound like he's singing soprano. Must I take your life yet again? Cool. Now say I am your father. Check the floor after defeating Doku and you'll find his signature weapon, a cursed blade known as Kitetsu, which makes the game immeasurably more difficult. Apparently this vampiric weapon feeds off the souls of the people it slays, meaning you have to constantly keep its figurative tummy full by using a move that drains enemies of their health and adds it to your own health bar, which is great. The only problem is, fail to do that, and slowly but surely, the sword begins to leech health from you, which is a bit inconvenient, given that all your enemies are already attempting to do the same thing. Pretty successfully, I might add. To be fair, the effect of the curse isn't dramatic. It would take about five or six minutes for your health to be completely depleted by Kitetsu, but it's almost guaranteed to leave you in a situation where you enter an already difficult fight with less health than you could have had. That's it. It's time for me to take you on personally. Later versions of the game eventually stripped the Kitetsu sword of all the negative effects of its vampiric nature, leaving only the positive effects of its vampiric nature. A bit like the character Blade. In that movie Blade, 
only it's actually a blade. The word blade has just lost all meaning. Thank you so much for watching this video, but uh-oh, this video's cursed. Yes, if you don't hit the subscribe button to subscribe to Outside Xbox, you will be forever cursed to receive inferior video gaming videos in your YouTube suggestions. All right, it's not really a curse, it's just how YouTube works. If you don't subscribe to Outside Xbox, you're less likely to see the videos. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see some more of this sort of thing, we have videos on screen right now, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.